Again, there is some talent on the U.S. side for Klinsman as well, but let's say Jamaica does have the home cooking at the moment. Mar Marco Rodriguez appears to be ready. And so are we, Jamaica in the yellow towards the right and the blue and white of the United States defending the goal towards the left. We are underway and again giving you a a setup of the lineups. Miller in goal for Jamaica down on the other side of the field. Mariapa, Nosworthy, and Taylor, one of those MLS players in the back with Morrison and Watson flanking. Austin Palmer in the midfield with Brian Johnson and Shelton in the attack for the United States. It's Tim Howard in goal. Clarence Goodson and Jeff Cameron in front. That was a question who was going to be in the central defense. Through ball and trying to make the run and the turn. One back Gomez rifles it through. Loose ball deflected and the third try the charm. 36 seconds in and Clint Dempsey has arrived. Deuce on the board for the U.S. and what a surprise. shock to be honest with you the ball came in but that's why you got guys that are fit you've got someone like Hercules Gomez the way he fought the way he battled he kept that ball alive and you talk about a little bit of luck in soccer sometimes the ball gets deflected right to Dempsey who's wide open and tucks it into the back of the net well that's the worst possible start for Theodore Whitmore and his players who would have wanted to come out here and impose themselves on the game I have to say it wasn't great defending but let's credit Clint Dempsey not been playing. There was talk of whether he should be on the bench. I think he's already answered that question. An important goal for the U.S. in the first minute of the game. 28th goal for the now Tottenham Hotspur star. Scores his first goal before he's suited up for Spurs. And give credit as well, Hercules Gomez keeping that ball alive. And Dwayne Miller could not bring it under control. So the United States now with the early lead. And in regards to trying to hold on to that is going to be a big question. Dempsey in the first minute, and you could see Jamaica trying to regroup in the early going. That one just seemed to be a case of Jamaica being just a little shaky, not quite certain, kind of expecting a chance to build. Never happened. Strong challenge from Austin. And he gets a talking to from Rodriguez. Well, now you'd expect the American team to, to have some possession to keep the ball. Here's that opportunity. See, Gomez goes down the channel. Channel. It should be challenged here. He shouldn't get away and get inside. Shots well saved in the end from Miller, but on the rebound, you see who's there, just waiting for that kind of opportunity. Clint Dempsey, he's been doing it for so long now. Knows exactly where to be. But you've got to give Hercules. Look at the way he fights off the defender. He keeps his feet. Great save by Miller. Another great save. But you talk about a little bit of luck. It bounces right to him. And he tucks it away. Nyron Nosworthy trying to throw his big frame in the way. But it fell straight to Dempsey. The worst place if you're a Jamaican fan. And you talk about Hercules correctly. But what a pass from Maurice Du. Yeah. I mean, that's not supposed to be his game. Now to the far side, looking for the equalizer. Skips in off Morrison's boot to the back post and cleared away. This now becomes a test for this Jamaican team. This obviously isn't the start they wanted. Players now have got to be brave, got to want the ball, can't afford to hide. Still plenty of time to, to get something from the game. Now, Robbie, is this a situation where a coach says, OK, mentally, something bad's going to happen early. How are we going to react? Uh, how many situational situations are you put into in preparation for this in the week coming up? Yeah, that happens in games, that happens in training, and sometimes play, the coaches will, will learn a lot about players, how they respond, and as I talked, it's about now being brave, it's not about hiding, you have to want the ball and believe you can still get back in the game. Cutting to the inside, Morrison, and the shot screams high, Tim Howard marshalling his forces, same point, Marcelo, uh, the United States, you'd be saying, we have the point, we have the, the insurance on the score, board at the moment but they can't afford to drop back this no, early you can't. You're, you're only in the fifth minute of the game you can't sit back you gotta play but we talked about the important things you gotta take the speed out of it you gotta control the midfield you gotta keep possession if you can keep possession of it you don't have to defend as much and I think that's important for the US to clog the middle long ball up forward for Altidore 
for deflection. Cameron not comfortable with his left foot, reaches out with his right, which leaves it open, and the foul. Restart here for Jamaica and the United States with Goodson. I think that might have been one of the reasons he comes in perhaps even more than Boca Negra. Cameron maybe was the lock in the lineup, but Goodson's height can help. Ball inside, tucked to the top of the 18. Almost miscommunication, but Altador gets it out of danger, at least briefly. On the turn, Jermaine Jones, now Kyle Beckerman. And with the lead, Beckerman's skills become a bit more important as well. Takes some of the pressure off and puts a bit more around the necks of Jamaica. Jamaica Federation founded in 1910, but it took until the 60s before they kind of joined the footballing world for obvious reasons. Joining FIFA in 62, CONCACAF in 65, and started qualifying immediately thereafter, but did not make it until that 98 dream come true. And Robbie, when that happened, did it feel as though, well, this is the start of something, not the end of it? Yeah, very much. I think it, it was almost a feeling of, of that Jamaica had caught up with, with some of the African nations who we've seen get to their first World Cup finals and then start to do it on a regular basis. That hasn't been the case. There's been a number of reasons, lack of investment, lack of vision at times um, with the Jamaican FA. But there was a thought that this group, that this time now, that things were starting to come together. So the team have to get over this disappointment. It's a little hard but there's still plenty of time on the clock. Free kick in the center, Morrison coming over to take it, and again, there is plenty of talent, plenty of speed, but the U.S. can afford to lay back just a bit. And it was some of those surprise insertions, Maurice Edu and the midfield when he was listed on the roster as a defender, Hercules Gomez in the starting lineup instead of Breck Shea, and Clint Dempsey who many thought, including me, would basically be the late game substitute to try and get the goal. Instead, all combining in the first 40 seconds. And now how does Jamaica respond? Austin. But, but they responded well so far, you know. They came out a little slow. They got the goal. But ever since the goal, the last three minutes, they've had possession. They're knocking it around. They've had the ball more than the U.S., so they have calmed down. Ball chip forward, a little over anxious, looking for Johnson, who has set up camp in the middle, and mentioned the fact that Shelton seems to be more comfortable in that spot. And instead, it's Johnson's big frame. So how does Shelton adapt? Well, you see almost when Jamaica don't have the ball, they almost go into a, a five-man midfield, and I'm not sure that's always getting the best out of, of, of those forward attacking players. I would like to see them play higher and wider on the pitch, Phil, to, to get some one-on-one -on -one situations, because let me tell you, if I'm quicker than you and I knock the ball past you, you have a problem. The moment Jamaica haven't had enough of those 1v1 situations around the pitch. Well, on the left side, you have Fabian Johnson and Jeff Cameron, but on the right with Goodson and Parkers, that is something, and maybe that's the reason that's where Luke and Shelton is, but now tracking back, battling, and good work to keep it alive. On the turn, Parkhurst, the defender with the cross, and then slammed away. It'll be a throw in for the U.S. Well, there's a little cameo. Parkhurst, your right back, is now up against Jamaica's record goal scorer, Luton Shelton, who's having to play almost at left back. That doesn't quite seem right. I think there might need to be some adjustment <laughs> with, with the setup here. Either that or something's wrong with the television yeah. set. But that's what the U.S. wants. Instead of having Shelton attack, they're making him defense, something that Shelton's not comfortable doing. You can see right there, Parker beats him, gets a cross off. So I, I see your point, but the U.S. wants Shelton to come out, so he has to defend. And played back. Beckerman pushing up into the offensive zone. Here's Goodson. Calm on the ball. Beckerman with a little chip. Beautiful touch out wide. Jermaine Jones, and he bounces one through the box for Altador that just skips across the goal line. Well, there's a better understanding amongst the, the blue shirts, I'd have to say. Good movement. Beckerman's anchoring things from that holding position. He's starting the play. At the moment, Jamaica just need to clear their heads. Just need to, to get that belief back into the squad, come together as a group. 25th appearance for Dwayne Miller. Not the way he wanted to start out, and it's hard to really blame him. He got the shot stopped from Gomez, and then Nosworthy, his big man behind him, 
was able to block the rebound. Perhaps you could argue about a midfielder not coming back and keeping an eye on Dempsey, but it's 30 seconds in. It just seems more a case of bad luck and some good bounces for the U.S. And the goalkeeper makes a great save. Miller does make a great save on that play. But again, you know, in soccer, you need a little bit of luck. And when things go your way, like Dempsey, the whole transfer now, he's with the Spurs, the balls, everything just kind of goes his way. Austin, the Leeds man, dispossessed in the midfield, striding forward was Jermaine Jones. And again, with Jones and Adu joining Beckerman in the midfield, Jones the one that has the legs and the lungs to push forward. And you wonder how long will Dempsey be out there now with a goal to his name? Maybe the first half, we'll see. They do have another game coming up in just a few days in Columbus. Looking up, Maurice Adu, the former Rangers now Stoke man. Tackled nicely and a chance on the counter. Austin rolls it through and here comes with Fabian Johnson caught up field trying to cover his Beckerman whipped across in a wasted effort. Good build up for Jamaica. They got the matchup they wanted but Lavelle Palmer could not get the ball into the right spot. Well that's a much better situation. We talked earlier Phil about the transition that, that Jamaica have to make. They've got good athletes in the team people who can, can get into that last third. Now it's about concentration. Now it's about delivering something for one of your teammates to have a chance at goal. But a little bit excited when he got there Lavelle Palmer and for all the good points of Beckerman speed is not one of them give him credit for trying to get yeah. over there but it was a matchup that Palmer probably should have taken advantage of but that's the advantage and that's the matchup that Jamaica wants mm -hmm. you want to be able to suck out one of the midfielders especially someone like Beckerman because look how hard a four he had to go to cover Palmer didn't do a good job on that cross but that's the matchup they want you want to pull one of the defensive midfields out of the middle Jason Morrison thought he had a chance, but the Allison man could not. Pulls it back and another build up through Palmer out wide. Possession for the Reggae boys as they try and catch up from the one nothing deficit. A little bump from behind, play on. Johnson might have gotten away with one, but Jamaica retreats and regroups. Both teams, one win, one draw, four points. But the United States with a two goal advantage in differential. Four to two over two to one. Again, you wonder for Jamaica on this turn under pressure from Altador if those missed opportunities in their opener against Guatemala will come back to haunt them. A little bump from behind, but offside was called first by Rodriguez, and the U.S. will get a restart. Watch how the U U.S. will slow the game down. They'll keep possession. There's, there's no rush now, having got that early goal. It's Jamaica who have to come out and force the pace. And Marcelo, arguably, from a U.S. perspective, this doesn't really change their game plan that much. Goodson perhaps getting a little too close on that one to Cameron. But from Jamaica, it puts a little bit more emphasis, a little bit more urgency into theirs, and that could cause some mistakes. But we talked about in the pregame show the one thing the U.S. wants to do, slow the pace down. Don't let Jamaica get into a foot race. And they've done that. And with a little bit of luck, a goal in the first half falls into their favor. But they've got to slow it down. they got to keep the pace, keep possession and don't let Jamaica make this a foot race. Ball cleared away. Dempsey looking back with those blackened eyes at Marco Rodriguez. No call, but they do get the throw. Nice move. That's yeah, a good turn. And unfortunately, he didn't pick up a free kick there, Dempsey. But let's give Jurgen Klinsmann some credit as well because he had a dilemma to make with Dempsey. And, it, you know, the, obviously you could have left him on the bench thinking that you can bring him on with 20 minutes to go to, to, to make something late in the game. But I think he's gone along the route of saying to Dempsey, listen, go out, give me an hour, give me everything you've got. And if need be, I can go to my bench and I can bring somebody on to, to see this game through. And in the end, it's looking like a good decision because at the moment, his goal is the difference between the two teams. Dwayne Miller getting set to put this back in play and Marcelo Robbie raises a good point and in fact it seems to be the safest way if you have a player in doubt play him early because you don't want to have to sub a sub. No I agree and I think that's why you started Dempsey to not Boca Negra because if you have to make two subs like that that's already eliminates the tactical side of things and I agree listen at this pace I think Dempsey can start the second half it's not a high pace game it's very slow it's very passive you could see U.S. is slowing the game down at this pace I think Dempsey could easily go 60, 70 minutes. And I think what we, we sometimes don't recognize with Clint Dempsey, he's a very intelligent footballer yeah. as well. It's not just 
his ability and, and his fitness. So clever players can, can find yeah. spaces in the game, can still dictate the game if the pace isn't too high. You take a look, there is Bocanegra, the U.S. captain. <laughs> Doesn't look like he knows what to do with himself sitting there on the bench next to a trio of younger stars. Again, Klinsman has been busy out wide on the overlap. Not really Jermaine Jones game, but he'll give it a shot. But it starts to break the other way for Luton Shelton. Be in sport.tv where you can find us online. You could also follow us on Twitter at be in sport one USA and at be in sport two USA for be in sport in Espanol. Get all the information about the leagues and carriers as it happens rifled up and over and Tim Howard a bit of something to worry about. But it does sail high quarter hour in the book as Rodolph Austin's shot goes off target another half hour to go in this opening frame. And it's come to shots from what 30 yards it's going to have to be something decent to beat Tim Howard balls moving a little bit. I think from the goalkeeper's movement you can see that he's pretty comfortable that that one was flying over. There, Martin Vasquez checking out his Facebook page. Tough life being an assistant, but then again, he and Klinsman getting accustomed to each other in Southern California after the former Mexican and U.S. international had retired and Klinsman moved. He reunited in Munich and hoping for a bit better success with the U.S. And Theodore Whitmore, the man who caused more than one coach a headache. Now the guy that's looking for the aspirin at the moment, thanks to the one nothing lead from the U.S. You had the chance to play with him. Did you ever have any thought that this was this guy was not only going to be a coach, but the coach of the national team? Not for one moment, I have to say. <laughs> Nobody would be further from the, the choice. But um, he's taken to the job well. Um, I think he likes the disciplines of the role. I think he likes the responsibility. Tonight's a big night for Theodore. In Jamaica, I'd say there's still you know one or two people who aren't sure if he's the right man to lead the, the, this this nation back to World Cup football. You know, nights like tonight will will, will go a long way into to winning those people over. And we talked about this before. It's not so much just this game, but this and the Columbus game with just two matches left after that. The entire World Cup future. And things can get a bit tight around the collar in the Federation offices. Ball nodded down. Good header by Taylor cleared to the near side still in play and then pops towards the bench. Phil Shane alongside Marcelo Balboa and Robbie Earl. Glad you could join us. The office is packed and the United States punches the clock first in the opening minute. Given away. Gomez to Jones now to Altador who's been quiet so far. Long cross that just curls on the wrong side of the chalk and Gomez playing a bit out of position normally a striker or a center forward but to get him out there I guess similar in many ways to what San Jose does with Chris Wondolowski putting him as that back post forward but they haven't really had the chance to take advantage of the crosses but they did get the goal off of his shot. Again Miller. Mentioned the U.S. now up to 33rd in the rankings. Kind of gives you an idea, even if it might be a flawed system, that there is still something to prove for Klinsman and company. Taylor hesitates and a beautiful chip to the middle. Good cover by Cameron, as that was a dangerous bouncing ball and looked like Johnson was ready to pounce. Quick on the throw. The bump from Reese Edu. Now that he's moved south of the wall, do we call him Maurice again, or do we still have to call him Morris? Morris. <laughs> First time we've seen this tactic, though, from Jamaica. Long diagonal ball playing onto the fullback. Just gives a chance of anything headed down. Might give Johnson a chance of sniffing out a chance. Goodson beaten for speed there, but Cameron had the angle covered. Out to the midfield is Jamaica getting a good stretch. 20th minute. One nothing United States U.S. starting with that win against Antigua and Barbuda but a bit deceptive and they just like Jamaica were held but against a Guatemala squad that seemed ripe for the picking and in fact the United States a bit fortunate to come away here again the goal just 30 seconds in. It's 
see how many yellow shirts are back there. Nobody can quite get the, the clearance that's needed. Dempsey's there to, to make amends. To say for that one, press down with the American team out of possession. How hard they're working that midfield three. If you look at Beckham and Edu and, and Jones, they're really working hard to shut the shut the spaces down for Jamaica. The moment Jamaica struggle to have any clear chances. And Marcelo, let me ask you this: I, you don't teach this. No, you, you don't teach. But that's something Hercules has always had. He fights. He scratches for everything. But again, that's a good shot right there. That ball could have bounced anywhere. It could have gone straight anywhere. It dropped right into Dempsey's place. So I, again, you need a little bit of luck. Beautiful little back heel from Johnson, but well covered. Blasted by Austin to flex high into the air. Off to the near side. Jamaica pursuing. They'll get the throw in. Also Dempsey. I mean, coaches can tell a player, be there for the drop, be there for the drop. But to find that little gap, a swing that catches more of Parkhurst than the ball, down in a heap, the North Zealand man. Champions League football upcoming for Parker. So back in the World Cup squad and to the UEFA Champions League if he can survive kicks like that from Jermaine Taylor. Was it Chelsea, Juventus, and Shakhtar Donetsk on the future for Parkhurst? That's an easy group, then. <laughs> I'd rather have that than what Real Madrid has. Yeah. And maybe get to that a bit later, but in regards to Kingston, 80 degrees at kickoff. Temperature starting to drop just a bit. Clear skies. There were some showers before the match, and maybe that's cushioned the field a bit. Fortunate bounce and another strict interpretation by Marco Rodriguez. And very emphatic to boot. I think the biggest disappointment for Theodore Whitmore, the Jamaican national coach at the moment, is that the team haven't really created a, a good opportunity. They, they've had a little bit of pressure, they've enjoyed a little bit more possession, but not quite, quite created that one chance that might bring them back into the game. Launched long by Mariapa, fifth appearance for the Reading Royal. United States, however, starting to get pinched and now stripped in their own end. A little hook from Beckerman, a step too late as Ryan Johnson was flying through. Actually, that was Rudolph Austin again, and perhaps Beckerman fortunate not to get a yellow for this. It seems that Austin's just pushed himself a little bit further up the pitch onto Beckerman, and we know he's got the athleticism. You'll see Beckerman isn't the quickest over the ground, has to lunge, takes a player down. Good situation for Jamaica. Well, he got caught right in between players, and Austin does a great job. He touches it, he exploits into the space, and Beckerman has to at least take him down. Rudolph Austin, 27-year-old mid, over the ball. Lurking behind is Lavelle Palmer, but it looks like it will be Austin. Let's see if they stick Nosworthy up front, the big man. I think Austin goes a little bit more for finesse. Palmer, let me tell you, goes for sheer power. If you're in that wall, you better be covering up. Looks like they are leaving Nosworthy and Mariapa back, but with Johnson and Shelton, there's men there. Blasted through, and it skips under Howard for the equalizer. It didn't sneak under the wall. It pounded a hole through it. The goal for Austin, and we're tied at one. Well, he got the free kick, and he picked himself up, and he hit a beautiful shot. I have to say, the organization of the Americans didn't look great. Rudolf Austin got his foot behind the ball. He made sure he got a good contract and hit the target. I thought he caught Tim Howard a little bit unaware. What an important goal that is for Jamaica. Yeah, I didn't see if it got deflected. It looks that it never really left the ground, and Tim Howard kind of got caught. Maybe the wall jumped, it went underneath. But that's, that's a rare ball, because to get beat like that, it wasn't over the top of the wall. Surprise, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if it got deflected on that. Fourth goal for the Leeds man, and we are tied at one. Now 20 minutes plus left to go in this opening half, and that definitely changes things. You'd almost imagine there had to be a deflection. Even though it was close to the pipe, Tim Howard normally shuts down much tougher shots than that. So now back to square one. He jumped up quickly, didn't he, Tim, as though he wasn't happy with something, whether it was a defensive organization of his wall or that he did get a deflection and moved away from him. 
Edu dispossessed, then wins it back, but in the process commits the foul. And it also it makes you think because that wall covers that side of the post. And Tim Howard dives. Did they split? Did they jump? Or did it go underneath? Uh, a lot of walls jump. Some yeah. managers like the walls to jump, but that does open the door to something squirting underneath. Whatever the reason, the game's back at 1 1. And the important thing from Jamaica's point of view is that the tails are up, confidence is, is high now. Luton Shelton got underneath that one and plants it beyond the cup. Tim Howard still barking out. Take another look from the angle. Yeah. Yeah. They jump. Yeah. They all go up. I'm not sure he gets a touch, but that's it. not what you want because that's, as you say, that's not the goalkeeper's oh, side. Yeah. Oh, Beckham, there it was. Gets a touch yep. off Beckham and in the end. Well, now that's... a chance for Jamaica to really impose themselves. And you could see Whitmore saying that way. A little bump from behind, but no foul. Shelton doesn't get the call. It'll be a throw in for the U.S. Knew it wasn't going to be easy. Talked about it during the pregame show, Marcelo. Strange things can happen. And Tim Howard just got snake bit. Well, he could, Beckerman commits the foul, deflects off him. Again, we talk about this game. A little bit of luck goes a long way. You have to create your own luck. Austin created his own luck. He went in, he got the foul, he took the free kick, he got a little bit of luck, and they tie the back game. So it's it's what we expect. We expect two teams to go at each other. So Lady Luck has flashed her backside at both teams now in the first half. Approaching the half hour, blasted up and over. Johnson thought he had the angle and Instead, Austin decided to take the shot. He's got a feel for it now, hasn't he? Good off Austin. Certainly, since he's been pushed a little bit higher into the game, he's having an effect in there. He, he's pushed Beckerman back. He's attracting one or two defenders to come out of holes. It'd probably been better just to have fed this ball wide to Johnson. And a little bit of concern there as well. Looked like there was some hesitation on who was going to step up and pick Austin. A whole bunch of players just standing around. Maybe not in the driver's seat, but their hand on the wheel, Jamaica. What does the U.S. do to try and reclaim control? Gomez might just be the man. Never hurts to ask for Hercules. Ball towards Dempsey, cleared away. I think the first period in the game we've seen Jamaica dominate that central midfield area. They're getting the benefit. Ball on the turn. Jason Morrison sweeps it off to the near side. And then pushed a little bit too far afield. In front of Taylor. It will be a throw in for the U.S. By the way, that goal for Clint Dempsey is fastest and the fastest for the U.S. in World Cup qualifying. Smashing his mark set against Barbados. Give the particulars in a moment. 53 seconds against Barbados. Ball flipped forward by Austin, intercepted by Parkhurst. You asked earlier, Phil, about the reaction, what happens when you go a goal down from a team. And well, Theodore Whitmore can be pleased with his players because they've worked themselves back into the game. They've worked to get some possession, create one or two chances. And with that little bit of luck from the free kick, they're now back on level terms. Launched across midfield, approaching the half-hour mark. And the water definitely flowing down towards Tim Howard's net. Another foul against the red, white, and blue. Well, and the U.S. is missing. Austin's taking control of the midfield. He stepped up. He felt the shot from 20 with his left foot. He went over the top. The U.S. hasn't found that guy. They haven't been able to find Clem Dempsey, Kyle Beckerman. They can't seem to find or Maurice do. They don't have somebody they can go to right now that can control the game. Jermaine Jones sending a little bit of a message. And again, you have a feeling with Jones in uniform. And Rodriguez with the whistle, the cards are going to come. A little bump again. This one against Maurice Adu. Was 26 years of age, already approaching his 40th cap. A 
to have just caught a bit by surprise and a little shirt tug that might have been over exaggerated. A bit concerned the U.S. can't even get the ball, let alone maintain possession. A little concerning right now, and this fact that we're already 30, 31 minutes into the game, we haven't seen Josie Altador. Ball skips away, Shelton challenging, slams through Parkhurst in the process, wins it back without a whistle. All of a sudden, this match has turned, and Jamaica in full control. Looks like there might have been advantage, but the foul whistled. And Parker still a bit slow to get up. Chris Woods shaking his head. The big man might be the easiest job to coach Tim Howard. Yep, Tim did a good job. Let's do it again. <laughs> I will say this, he played with us in 96 with the Colorado True. Rapids, and he is one of the best guys that just keeps the, even when things are going wrong, he keeps the atmosphere in the locker room just happy and flowing. It was, it was great to have. Burst through the middle, Ryan Johnson will be halted by the whistle. Things getting a bit choppy at the moment. Jamaica a little bit disappointed there because they felt that it was a good challenge to win the ball. So in that midfield area. Jason Morrison coming in. It looked like the ball was there to be won. Would have set up a counter attack for, for Ryan Johnson. Dempsey, a little slow to get up, and you can see, played 32 minutes, and that shirt is drenched. By the way, Chris Wood, this is almost like a busman's holiday. Ball headed back by Adu, and then cleared off the wrong side of the laces. U.S. is going to sneak a corner kick out of this chance. Chris Wood also, Howard's goalkeeping coach at Everton. I think he's just around to carry the gloves, but if Howard ever has a question, not many better to ask. When you think about it, growing up in the shadows of Friedel and Keller, no surprise that Howard, one of the sharpest keepers around, near post headed away. U.S. trying to maintain something. And Dempsey pulls a trick out back for Beckerman. Clarence Goodson starting to push into the area. The big man, though, now could be caught out of position as the U.S. wins it back, or Jamaica wins it back. Might be one of the reasons the U.S. starting to pressure on the Jamaican end. Stop those easy outlet passes, and Maurice Du does just that. Altador drops it back to Gomez and Marcelo one of these times wouldn't you like to see Altador just take it and go I would love to see him turn and go at somebody one on one but we haven't seen it you know we see him he gets it he one touches it and he goes off he's got to be able to hold the ball so you can bring in the midfielder so you can bring in the Beckerman the Jones the Dempsey's and he hasn't done that yet again Miller Approaching the 35th, and that has to be a huge weight off of his shoulders, courtesy of the free kick and the deflection. And now it's Beckerman that's going to be looking to take the goat horns off a bit, maybe here. Strong challenge by Jason Morrison, one of the smallest guys in the park. It's interesting, though, you look at Kyle Beckerman watching the last few minutes, and when the game's slow, it's slowed down. Beckerman comes into his own, he can keep possession. But when Jamaica play at a good pace in that, in that midfield area and start to get runners, he really starts to struggle to, to command that midfield area. And that's something that I think is important to Jamaica, that every now and then they up the tempo, they play with quick pace and run the game out of people like Kyle Beckerman. Ball off to the far side. Challenging is Fabian Johnson. And the Hoffenheim man wins a throw in. Of course, we talked about this before off camera, but with Beckerman, in some cases, not saying that the United States is like this, but you take Xavi and you drop him in Stoke, it's not going to be the same. So in some ways, don't you need players around Beckerman that can play like Beckerman for him to be at his best? Well, you do, but you call them almost like the dogs of war when, you, when you've got Adu, when, you, when you've got the likes of Jones in there. They can win the ball. They can rat around and get possession. Get 
possession. Yeah. Maintaining is a little bit harder. Yeah, li listen, listen, it's simple. Well, we used to play the, th the one key phrase is play to your strength. You win the ball, tackle hard, give it to a guy that can do the rest. Jones still down behind the play. Rodriguez says play on and Howard with the grab. Remember FIFA even making more of an emphasis of this play until the whistle. And it's Jones on the receiving end this time. Wonder if there might have been a bit of payback from Rudolph Austin. Actually, Kevin Bryan didn't appear to be much there. Just some bad luck for Jones. We've seen that once or twice now. Those 50-50 type challenges. The Jamaican players coming out on top. The sense there's some belief flowing through this team now. Good look at Bryan. Plays his pro ball in Vietnam, of all places. 28 years of age, but Whitmore found him. And to this point, doing a good job with Shelton and Johnson. That's one of the differences with, with this squad now, Phil. That, you know, the 98 team I played with, the majority of players were home-based players playing in the local leagues. Nowadays, you've got players playing in the MLS, but certainly in Europe, you know, Vietnam, and, and doing good jobs. And, and you, you're seeing some of that experience in, in these kind of situations now. Long ball forward, and the frustration of Altidore continues to show. Not sure what Goodson was trying to do, but it definitely wasn't what Altidore was. Yeah, it's amazing how far Jamaican football's come to U.S. We were all college kids back in the old days playing, and now you've got guys in Europe, you've got guys in South America. Before we came straight from college, we'd go practice for a week, and then we'd play a World Cup qualifier. A little clatter into behind from Johnson. In some ways, that shows the promise of CONCACAF that still, in many ways, is untapped. In fact, take a look how long it took for Clint Dempsey to finally get his transfer saga settled. In fact, Jurgen Klinsmann coming out and blasting the agent of Maurice Du for pretty much taking the entire summer to finally get him a club. So there still is something to prove, but the talent is there. Into the corner, and Nosworthy shepherds it across. Looks a bit winded. United States, of course, finishing third in the inaugural World Cup way back in 1930. But their only other real claim to fame, 2002, with the quarterfinals. A Torsten Frings handball away from a shot at the semis. And we talked about you in 98, Robbie, but Marcelo watching from the sidelines and in the stands. And as a fan, 2002, with that golden generation just starting to bloom, it seemed like the world was the U.S. oyster. Yeah, I thought you were going to tease me for sitting on the bench. <laughs> <in that game. laughs> Chance on the turner over, and Johnson takes it wide. He played that forward with Johnson. He had a good run from Shelton in behind. Talked about that counterattack, good pace. Missed up the opportunity. U.S. back line getting pinched tighter and tighter to their six. That one, again, a wasted cross. This time it's Austin. Last time it was Palmer. Jamaica fighting back for the equalizer on that deflected free kick, but they've had a few chances here in the first half. I'd say, you know, watching Jamaica, they've gotten themselves in some good positions on the outside, but very poor crossing. Yeah. We've seen four, now five, over the top of the goal. When they create the space, they're not putting that final touch on the cross. What is it about goalkeeper coaches? Warren Barrett there looked like he's burning a hole into the ground. He was a tough one to beat. Dwayne Miller could learn a lot there. Ball kicks up, a chance for Adu. This is the concern for me. And we saw Adu has the ability, but doesn't really use it as much. Same story with Jones. He can make that pass. This is the one area where you would have thought that Jose Francisco Torres could have slid into or Landon Donovan could be used. But right now, the U.S. pretty much getting run over. I'm going to let you take that one. <laughs> <laughs> Six minutes left. A chance on the break. Nosworthy tangling with Altidore. Overlap from Johnson. Could be a chance. Three on three if they hurry. Tries to sneak it into Altidore. Gets tripped up by Mariapa, but incidental. Pops up on Beckerman and then cleared back to Cameron. He reaches out with a boot, but it's offside against Jamaica and Johnson. 
that's a shame for Jamaica because, again, those are the situations when you win the ball back quickly, you can look to counter-attack. There's a lot of space in behind that USA back line. And Marcelo on that last break forward, Altidore again was being tangled, but he found an opening, and Johnson for the first time getting involved. He tried to get him into that space. He couldn't play it in there. But again, Josie has to learn to play with his back towards goal. He's got to be able to hold the ball. The U.S. can't hit a ball over the top. They're knocking it, they're knocking it, and they're losing possession. They're getting fouled. But the ball's got to be able to be played into that forward that can hold the ball. That's the old Brian McBride days. You can play to me, hold it, then you can bring everybody else into the midfield. The U.S. doesn't have that right now. Altador makes the run, the kick pass back. Dempsey on the return, trying to go through two defenders, still battling, tries to keep it in play, but it just trickles across, and the shot goes awry regardless. It's good defending. Have to see the job off with Clint Dempsey, looking to just try and get something in there. Although Marcelo, was that a case where the U.S. could have used a more selfish striker? Again, I, you know what, I've always known that the best forwards in the world are a little selfish. They're not looking to play the one-two. They're trying to find a way to turn the guy and go at somebody one-on-one. -on -one. Josie did a nice job there. There's no doubt he found Clemson at MC. They played a great little one-two, but eventually you want to see him turn and go at goal. New job drawing the foul by Brian. And again, Jamaica will regroup. 42nd minute, just a few minutes left in this opening half. And hasn't quite been a roller coaster. Let's just say two trips on the seesaw, but it's all towards the Jamaica end. Beckerman again getting pulled out with the Johnson overlap and pokes it away. Strong play, wins the goal kick. Well, certainly a tactic that Theodore Whitmore's done now to get Austin sitting around Beckerman to run him into those wide areas where he doesn't want to go. And so he's unlo little unlucky not to draw a foul there. Rodolfo Austin. No real foul, just standing on top of the ball here. The play that just happened, and that one a bit more questionable. Yeah, I didn't think he got the ball there, Kyle Beckerman. Linesman right there, and Marcos Quintero into the middle, the return pass. Poor job holding off, or at least just taking the hit was Goodson. Maybe Howard could have come out a bit quicker, but the U.S. dancing with fire. Didn't start the game well, Jamaica, but certainly finishing it in, in good form now. Some more command of, of the ball in midfield, more chances being made up front. Again, in the office, when you get that goal like Jamaica does, fans are back into it. You get that adrenaline rush, and, and they've completely have controlled the midfield over the last 15, 20 minutes. Look at the possession. It was... <laughs> A good 7-8% better for the U.S. just a few moments back. Jamaica balancing it out and, in fact, starting to take over. Now the U.S. looking to build a rhythm. Again, Goodson and Cameron, the choice in the back. Bocanegra sitting. Chirundolo replaced by Parkhurst in the starting lineup. So a couple of changes that were a surprise in the back line. Some thought that Trundolo picked up a little injury with training. There's talk about calf injury, possibly. Maybe he's been saved for the game next Tuesday. And again, that continues to bring the soap opera that is Timmy Chandler. Although Eric Lehigh starting to play and play well on that right flank for Villa. In for Altidore. Again, dishes off. Nice ball. Parker slips through. Slotted, but not home. The run from the back line. I think that was Cameron sliding through. But regardless, Dwayne Miller to deny. And actually, it was Dempsey looking for his second. And again, he comes from a late, deep line position, Clint Dempsey. That's a good contact with the ball. And it's actually a good save from Dwayne Miller. Has to get down low. Beckerman sends it the other way. A little shaky in the back, and Howard just tries to get it out of Dodge. Parker's challenging on the near side. Take another look. And Josie does a nice job with the... Right there, great job with the turn. He lays a ball right in. This is a great ball. He comes in and Dempsey slides. Miller's right there. Great save. He can barely see that ball. Great reaction. Again, not right at the keeper. He had to respond. Now a chance on the charge. Jones, but it stays behind. Lunging with Javon Watson to win it back for Jamaica. Well, after the goal coming in the opening minute, 
there was the thought that this maybe not a cakewalk but could be a relatively boring match for the United States that's not the case as we are now in the 45th minute so you don't get boring at the office please. <laughs> not against the USA ball to the inside again a do there were a couple of stoppages but how much time will Rodriguez add probably not that much Back for Jones, maybe one last chance for the Yanks. Lifted forward, one man in Altidore. Well covered Nosworthy, but the clearance leaves a bit to be desired. Half-hearted try for Dempsey, who seems to be not quite as sharp as he was. Beckerman wins it, deflects up. Three on one if they hurry, but a good hustle by Miller off his line to cover the danger. That one could have cost Jamaica big. Yeah, read the situation well, good pace. Made sure he got to the ball, Dwayne Miller. Couple of important stops late in the game. Give his team a little bit of confidence. Marcelo, do you read anything into Dempsey's reactions over these last few minutes? Just catching his breath? You know, I think he's catching as a Prue. This, this is a guy that hasn't played in a little while. You can see his touch isn't there. The ball keeps bouncing up. He doesn't have quite the touch because he hasn't have his game fitness. But you were talking about Kyle Beckerman earlier, Robbie, and, and he's not the fastest guy. But the thing when you're not fast, the most important thing is what? Intelligence. He reads the game well. You saw the ball that he intercepted right there. So, I, you know, you don't have speed, but you got to be intelligent. And that's something Beckerman is. Shot bounces wide. Jamaica pleading for a deflection, but Morrison will be unrewarded. I just See that. get the sense that the Americans almost would, would like half time. Jamaica, I think, would have liked to have continued another five minutes or so. Well, that patch signifying Brazil 2014 starting to fall off the sleeve of Jason Morrison. But thanks to the goal from Rudolph Austin, the dream is still firmly attached to the reggae boys. We have reached the half. The score at one. Dempsey in the first minute and then equaled by Rudolph Austin's free kick. We've reached the halftime at the National Stadium, Independence Park in Kingston, Jamaica, and it's all still to be decided. Without any further ado, let's head back to the Express. Temris Lane has more on a very busy day of qualifiers. And back in Kingston, you take a look at the scenes on the field and the scenes in the dressing room might be a bit more interesting. We'll find out how that plays out, but here's how the first half did. Highlights and early on, it didn't take long for Gomez and company. Now, 37 seconds in, you see Dempsey, right place, right time. Puts in the back, then it puts the U.S. up. One nothing a minute in, but you like Gomez. Look at the fight. And Nosworthy does a nice job there. He blocks it, he does what he's supposed to do, but it comes to Dempsey. And Dempsey, and just watch Dempsey in the top of your screen. He's just floating, he comes in, nice and easy. He's positioning himself. Nosworthy does a nice job, he blocks that, but drops right to Dempsey to score the goal. Chance here on the turnover. That was a problem for the U.S., an advantage for Jamaica. Yeah, certainly starting to win a little bit more possession in midfield, creating one or two chances. Rodolfo Austin picked himself up, having been fouled by Kyle Beckerman, gets a flick. As it happens, off Beckerman's foot, goes past Tim Howard in the goal, Jamaica a level. We talked about Clint Dempsey always kind of being that person in the right spot. Kyle Beckerman sometimes has that snake bit reputation, but uh, steps up a little bit later on as did the U.S. looking for a second. Right, you see, we talked about Altidore being able to turn, play with his back. He plays a great ball into Parker. Dempsey comes across, but Miller says, no, no, not today. Well, the fans making their way back to pitch side and taking a look at the team as they step back onto the pitch. We start with Jamaica, the home side, and, and Robbie, uh, you had a chance to hear a little bit from Theodore Whitmore. Uh, I like that big ups. But, uh, uh, give me an idea if Whitmore, the same Whitmore they used to play with, what do you see from him in tinkering with this second half? Or is it a case of, okay, we had the jitters in the first 10 yeah. minutes, but things started to click? I think that's the case uh, at first, Phil, that he'll say, listen, we had, we had a bad start, bad fi first five minutes in the game, but we, we cleared our head, we got back into things, and now we, we bossed that, the, the end of that first half. So I want you to go out and do the same for the next 15, 20 minutes. I want to play with a high intensity, a high pace, and then when required, he can go to his bench and bring in the kind of guys who could become match winners and Marcelo from a US perspective fans not might not want to hear it but 
pragmatic people. Klinsman normally doesn't fall into that category, but pragmatic people would say you're leading the group at the end or coming into this match. If you get a draw, you're still leading the group with one more match out of the way and you're heading home to face the same team. Uh, do you think the U.S. pushes for a go-ahead goal? Are there going to be offensive changes? Is this one of those cases of survive Kingston? No, I think right now they got to clog the middle. Towards the end of the first half, you saw Austin started to take control of that midfield. Beckerman, Maurice Adu, they have to get control. They got to slow the game down, knock the ball around, and when you lose it, you got to condense the space. Don't allow them to get into tight spaces, turn you, and run at goal. But again, halftime, 1-1, you're still in this game, and if you can get out of here with a point, you take it, but you're not going to sit back for 45 minutes. And again, Jurgen Klinsmann, while he has been able to button up that top collar against Italy and Mexico, does uh, tend to have a few tricks and maybe pulled one out to help give Gomez a chance in the early going that fell to Dempsey as they beat Dwayne Miller. And uh, I think mentally you have to give a lot of credit because from a coach's perspective, that's the worst time to give up a goal because you have 45 minutes more before you can actually try and reorganize things. It's up to the players on the field. Yeah, and that's why you work in training. That's why it's Theodore Whitmore's talked about how tight this group was. It, it has been a case where he's left Marlon King and Ricardo Fuller, two big, big name players who, who were playing in England scoring goals. But he's felt this group were tight. They were, they were growing together. And I think we've seen some of, the, of that in, in that first half. Second half underway, 18 matches without defeat against Jamaica, but at the same point, they have never won in Kingston. Perhaps one of those will come to a close or we will see a draw match. Right now, Jamaica getting started. Maybe the field a bit tilted towards this end. Jim Howard facing the pressure in the early seconds that Dwayne Miller succumbed to. Ryan Johnson. Sometimes a forgotten man for Jamaica, but since moving to Toronto and since Whitmore has taken over, does seem to be a favorite of the Jamaica coach. I haven't really seen much, but he's been drawing the attention, allowing a bit more for Shelton, but really much of the danger has come from the midfield, though. You know, what I've liked about Johnson tonight is that he stayed quite central on the pitch and, and he's occupied the two central defenders. I think sometimes Altidore almost wanders around too much you, that you don't have that focal point to hit as a midfield player and go and join. Sometimes standing still is, is the best movement. And sometimes also from a defender's perspective, Marcelo, someone stands still for a while, you kind of take them for granted. You do. He sits there, but I'd prefer someone who sits still than someone like Ryan Johnson that kind of just floats away. You got to keep an eye on him here. You got to keep an eye on him there. So I, I, I'm a little more dangerous of, of someone like Johnson who moves a little more. So now a free kick for Jamaica. Another chance. Wonder whether the wall jumps this time. Not something usually that, that the goalkeeper and the coach will work on whether the wall's going to stay and that you're asking the, the free kick taker to go over the top or whether he wants them to jump and, and try and put put the taker off. They did jump, he caught Beckerman's heel and all of a sudden uh, Jamaica find themselves back in the game. 1-1 one, one the score, Tim Howard. Well, we've seen him even with deflections pull the U.S. out of the fire. Couldn't do it in the first half. Will he be tested here? Four men in the wall. 48th minute, and they take it straight off the chest. The rebound shot parried away. Howard thought about catching it, but then it started to dip. A corner kick for Jamaica. Good build up, and again, it's Rudolph Austin. He's got a personal vendetta, hasn't he, against Tim Howard, really firing those shots in and hitting the target, making the goalkeeper work. From the corner. Howard dancing nervously on his line, whipped in, back post, and almost knocked home, but by the wrong team. Jermaine Jones with his best chance of the day, but it was on his own keeper. Well, let me tell you, that tells you the quality of the ball that Jermaine Jones nearly ended up putting in the back of his net. It was a fantastic delivery from Rudolph Austin. This will sweep away from Tim Howard. Looks like Lavelle Palmer getting set to take it. As the horns continue to rain down, a little too much action inside around the spot. Rodriguez coming in to calm things. Top flight ref since 97, FIFA ref since 2000. At 38, still 
at the top of his game. Palmer waiting for the near post run again. Rodriguez comes in and I wouldn't be surprised if we see a card. No, he'll give him another chance. From the flag Palmer near post six that one a tricky hop. Dempsey couldn't control and it's out for the third straight corner. Quickly played well won Austin dangerous ball across there's Tim Howard reaches to punch it but now quickly to his feet shot deflects Cameron lurking forward but now out of position as it's lifted up and off target the offside flag on the initial pass as Shelton denied Cameron came out for that ball and then when it was quickly turned over a huge gap on the back line. Well, and Tim Howard did a great job there. The ball's coming across, and in Jamaica over the last two or three crosses, I've played some very dangerous ball, especially Austin on that uh, on the corner kick, the shot from distance. So they've got to be able to step out. You've got to put some pressure on the guy that's crossing the ball. Ball played to the center. Jones goes back down to the right. Haven't seen a lot of side-to-side -side movement from the U.S. Into the center. Falls for Altador. Good quick settle, but the shot squirts wide. There, good look. Darren Maddox on the front of the line. Will he be the first one in? Whitmore does fancy his speed, and as we've seen in his debut year, he's got a bit more than speed. It's just a little bit of time there, Jones. Sits in a pocket just outside that 18-yard box. I'll be a little worried for the Jamaicans that they don't get too deep. They don't allow shots to be reined in from, from that kind of distance. Jamaica. Again, heading to Columbus for the next match. The October tilts will be at Guatemala and against Antigua and Barbuda. Right back at the office for the United States after the home match against Jamaica. They'll visit Antigua and then welcome Guatemala. So down to these final three and a half matches before the hexagonal. These two teams were the favorites. Guatemala can surprise. I think Antigua has proven, at least at this point, to be more than just a speed bump. Wouldn't be surprised if they get a scalp before this is all over. Another collision in midfield, and Rodriguez does blow the whistle this time. Altador taking a pop. Started the season in really good form, didn't he? Fez out more four and four, Josie Altador, but can struggle a little bit of late. And quite looked as confident as you'd probably like from a centre forward. U.S. might be ready to make a switch six minutes into the second half. Danny Williams is off the bench, loosening up. Normally that would be a right-sided midfielder, but then again, with some of the versatility that's out there, could pretty much be anyone. Dempsey or Gomez, perhaps the most likely. Jamaica down the line. Johnson challenging another poor touch. This time it's Cameron gets it off the back of his head. In the U.S. a bit fortunate they were able to clear. They do going over to defend against Jermaine Taylor. A giveaway by Jason Morrison and a pull down to boot advantage played. Go Gomez tries to get through the challenge, chips it back to the middle, settled by Dempsey, but it's off his arm, and the advantage disappears just like that. Beckerman stepping forward, trying to win it back. So close. Have yeah, a great ball by Dempsey. He gets it, he wins it. Look at the speed. Howard gets there. The legs get tangled, and he is down in pain. Parker screaming there should have been a foul, but to me, that was a 50-50 ball, and Howard took the chance. In fact, maybe a bit casually. A great ball in by Gomez. You can see right there, just off the top, he puts his hand out. But you got to like what they're doing. A little tuck in, great little chip inside, just a little too far. If Dempsey gets his hand up, ref does a nice job. He's right there. Hercules Gomez, a good idea. We starting to see a bit of chemistry develop between those two. This is a huge concern, though. 
It's one of those situations where Tim Howard almost becomes a sweeper. When the ball's played in, in deep, he has to be ready to come off his line and deal with that ball. He looks to play it out, and then there's a, there's a connection between him and the striker who's going forward. And I'm, I'm with you, Phil, as a, as a forward-thinking player. I think you've got a right to go for that ball. I thought he was there to, to be won. Howard gets there first. It seems like he's just got to knock around that ankle area. But he got there, and I think he could have gotten there a bit quicker. He was trying to, it seemed like, see if the forward would shy away. He did then realized he needed to get there anyway. I think if he goes full speed to begin with, if there is a collision, maybe not as much. Oh, you'll see it's the pace of Shelton. Shelton doesn't lift his foot. It's not one of those dangerous plays where you see the studs come up and they catch the, the goalkeeper. It's just a coming together with two shins and fortunately looks like Tim Howard's okay. By the way, there was a big question with four goalkeepers called into training by Jurgen Klinsmann. Who would be the number two? Nick Romando has been his favorite, but the Salt Lake keeper not dressing. Brad Gazan, who played lights out for Villa, mentioned Lehigh, but Brad Gazan playing spectacularly. Some Villa fans saying it's about time he got the call over Shea Given, but he is dressed and is loosening up just in case. You got a good look there. Brett Shea could make a difference in this game getting down the left hand side. So but which you, Breck Shea? I think when you plays for the national team we know where Breck Shea shows up. When it's FC Dallas it's sometimes you don't know. Overlapping run looking for Johnson a poor clearance but then stepping up Nosworthy runs into the back of his own man and a fortunate bounce. Speaking of running in Goodson does just that and gets the foul Jamaica with the restart 10 minutes into the second half. And that's one of those that the defenders always do. I'm sitting next to Marcelo. He's smiling Riley to himself <laughs> as a defender. You love that ball that comes into the forward on the halfway line. You can come in and give him a, a real good smack. Long into the corner. Parkhurst has done quite well. This is not the first time he's played right back for Klinsman, but as a first choice right back, you mentioned there was a question about a niggling injury for Steve Chirundolo, perhaps saving him for Columbus, but it again goes to show how valuable Tim Chandler could have been to this squad and now starting to make some noise that, hey, I'm not really looking for Germany. I'm just waiting for the right time and really trying to cement myself with my club at Nuremberg. So if he's telling the truth, who knows, maybe by October, Steve Trundolo and Parkhurst will have some competition. Another foul on the dribble through. This one a bit closer to goal. Austin going down. Somewhat similar to where he took the shot on the other end of the field in the first half. Yeah, it's a, it's a feature of his thing. play, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. He wants to get turned on Beckham and he wants to drive forward. He knows he's got the power and the speed to, to cause problems in that midfield. This free kick a bit different. And if anything, though, you take a look at that replay. Beckerman did a good job laying off a bit this time, forcing Austin wide. It was Jones coming back trying to hook the ball away they got whistled yeah, but again if you're a defensive midfielder you want to force them to the outside twice now Austin's come inside twice they've had to take him down defensive midfield at that angle you got to turn your body a little more force them to the outside ball forward for Johnson a little collision with Cameron now dangerous touch and a foul that probably didn't need to be made with a better one Johnson going in Goodson retreats Long, lanky-legged defender starting to get some credit at Bronby. Another substitution, and it will be for Kyle Beckerman. Legs getting a little too tired for Klinsman's liking. And it's going to be Danny Williams. And the strange thing is, this looks like it might be one of the first times Williams will be playing in his natural position for the United States. Converted. Right back, left back, right mid, left mid, and now where he feels most at home in the center of the park with Jones and Adu. It could give him a bit more of a dynamic look, but does Adu drop for Williams? Does Jones drop or does Williams stay in the hole? I think Williams is going to sit in the hole. He's got fresh legs. Austin's done a very nice job of controlling the midfield, turning with that kind of pace. And I think Klinman realized that. Beckerman's gotten turned, his pace isn't there, so you're going to put Williams in there a little quicker. Ball off to the far side, long run into the middle, but unrewarded. Shelton can't get the opening. Austin instead retreats. Watson almost has his pocket picked. 
Reads the deflection and draws the defense wide and then spins back to the inside. The Dynamo man using his big frame but eventually runs out of space. Good job by Jamaica to hold on though in a switch of the field. Haven't seen much of that today by either team. Laid into the box and a good shield by Johnson. Looking better and better at left back. Williams teammate at Hoffenheim. Went away there. Fellow American Joe Jow. You ever play with his dad? Philip Joe. Jow. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Speed to burn and Joe on loan at St. Pauli. And his dad crafty. Very crafty on the ball. So perhaps after a year in the second division back to Hoffenheim. Hoff America. Little touch to the near side. Jones looks like he's flipped to the left. Wouldn't be surprised to see on the swing and the miss and then the retaliation to Brian. A little frustrated off that missed touch. See if Adu has indeed dropped back and Williams mirroring Jones on the other side. Rodriguez having a chat and it looks like don't know if it's a bruised ego or something else, but he swung hard enough to hit himself. Sometimes those silly things that can cause you all kinds of injuries, Phil. I don't know if he's maybe swung and his standing leg has taken all the impact. All those things that you, you know, if it doesn't hurt, you laugh at yourself. But um, there's a bit of a problem. You see, he touches the ball with one foot, tries to kick it with the other. Actually, I think there was just a coming together with the, the foot on the ankle uh, between the two players. It's Kevin, Kevin Bryan. Bryan. Yeah, just catches him. a small him. guy. Ivan Pierre, the U.S. trainer. Says things will be okay. Just making one switch in the midfield. Taking a look at the bench, by the way. Defensively, Spectre, Bocanegra, Orozco in the midfield. Shea and Torres and Zussi still remain. And Terrence Boyd, the lone front runner, and he has been red hot for rapid. A little clattering from Maurice Du and another free kick. The U.S. giving too many chances around the box here. And again, it's that man, Austin, who reads the, the knockdown well. What Jamaica are doing in, in that area is winning what you call 50-50s. This keeps the game in this half of the pitch. And Austin's doing a great job of getting around whichever midfield player it is and causing them problems. We were talking earlier about the absence of Bradley. That's not really his job. That's still a position. The guy that's going to be playing behind Bradley that Klinsman still has to identify. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. But Austin, he's just been anticipating the ball. He's been reading the play where it goes. He's just been a second ahead of the American defender right now 41 caps now for the Leeds man lasted in and it's knocked home 60 second minute goal and Jamaica taking advantage two off the free kick and the party just getting started in Kingston now listen to that noise in the office and that's why they say this team are the boss right here it's a wonderful free kick, I've got to tell you. Because to hit the ball from that distance, Luton Shelton, the record goal scorer from what? A full 25 yards against the keeper, the caliber of Tim Howard is an outstanding finish. And I have to say, I was a little surprised when I saw it go in the back of the net. I see Howard going to that side, and I'm thinking, the big goalkeeper's getting a touch to this. But such was the quality of the free kick that Jamaica come from a goal down to be leading 2-1. And again, it was Austin who earned the free kick and Shelton who converts his 34th for Jamaica for the Turkish based player. And for Whitmore, this one's not over yet. Still about a half hour to kill and it looks like they're ready to stick on some more speed. It's going to be Kevin Bryant who takes the seat and Darren Maddox getting set to check in. For those of you who have the chance to watch him ply his trade with Vancouver. Let's just say the back line for the United States. Their headache might just be beginning. 22 years of age out of Portmore. Another one of those Akron Zips products starting to ply their trade and now that's even having international consequence. 
Decent day for Brian, did the hard work, and now it's up to Maddox to keep this flame alive. And for the United States, the early goal from Dempsey, well, that's just a distant memory, Marcelo. It was, you know, they, since Jamaica's gotten the goal in the 22nd minute, they've been in control of the game. They really have. They've knocked it. They've been more aggressive. And especially in the midfield, you've got to give it to Austin because he got taken down for both free kicks. Maurice Sidhu didn't have to go down right there. Kind of guide him. Two free kick kicks, two goals. Blasted away by Dwayne Miller, who has really been untested since that early foray. Altador. One back by Jamaica. Johnson again doing the hard work. Ball sails long. Howard, and again we wonder, talked about Howard heading over to that side. Was he hampered after his collision with Shelton? Did he have the lift? Did he have the push? I think we might be doing a slight disservice to the, the goal kicker, to be honest. It was a fantastic free kick. Yeah. If that was a Brazilian, if that was Messi, I think we'd be talking about it long into the night. We should be doing the same with Luton Shelton because it's a wonderful delivery, wonderful contact on the ball. I got to agree. I, I mean, that ball was ripped from 25 yards, bending away from Howard. It looked like it just nicked the post the way it went. So, yeah, I, I think we'll talk about that uh, as one of the best goals we've seen so far. Williams clattering into Austin on the defensive side. Jones coming in saying he could do a better job refereeing. And Rodriguez has actually stayed relatively calm. I'll just get the sense one or two of the American players on. It's starting to lose a little bit of their composure. Actually disappointed to concede the second. Klinsman pacing on the sideline might be amongst them. Mm. Jamaica are, are, are playing when they need to play. They're, they're winning those 50-50s when they have to. They're being physical. And they're mixing the game up nicely. Beautiful work in the back. And that's the brilliance of Jamaica. But can also sometimes be their Achilles heel. Not today. Maddox speed wins a throw in deep. Cameron having to lay off. This kid the real deal. Now you're talking about if it was a Brazilian or an Argentinian taking that free kick, but something goes back to the fact that there is talent out there, but it's not always quite respected. A cup of coffee at Sheffield United and pretty much the rest of Shelton's career has been in Scandinavia or now in Turkey. He's definitely got the talent. Just look at his goal record as well. He certainly knows where the net is. Well, flipped forward. Foot race for Gomez. He's not going to win that. Back to midfield, Jones, you can start to see that red draping across his eyes, poked around Edu. All of a sudden, Jamaica playing with a purpose. Risedu getting it back to Parkhurst. Good play by the North Island man. Edu trying to get a bit tricky and loses possession, but out it goes. That comes down to me, it comes down to midfield play. Jamaica's done a better job with Austin. Let's take a look at the free kick. Look at this, ah, that's a great goal, no way. Howard's got his post, the wall's there. But look at the way he hits it. it barely gets over the wall. He rips that into that corner. And Whitmore, well, he used to be able to do stuff like that himself. Luton Shelton doing it for his coach, who now sees a 2-1 lead it off the post well, let's look at the first free kick it gets a deflection and we'll say how was unlucky let me tell you about that second one that's nothing to do with luck that's to do with pure technical skill and Luton Shelton has to take all the credit for that again for the United States though they let an opportunity slip they still have a half of this half to reclaim for Jamaica now in the driver's seat can they hold on edge of the six looking for some insurance Good control and let's just say the United States with a lesser squad looked more comfortable in Azteca than they do in Kingston right now. Soft touch into space but people moving in reverse. Johnson trying to catch up into the corner and Jason Morrison making it look foolish into the middle rifled wide down goes Tim Howard to make the stop. 
Well, they're enjoying themselves right now, the Jamaican players. The crowd are into the game as well. Everybody wants to touch. Everybody wants to show what they can do. I think the big challenge for the Jamaicans now, though, Phil, is that when they went to goal down, we, we, we asked, could they get back into the game? Have they got the character? Now they've gone two on up. Can they manage this game out for the, for the remaining, what, 20 minutes or so and make sure if it needs to be, it's a 2-1 victory? And, Robbie, unlike the goal from Dempsey, where there was still an entire game to play, we're getting down to crunch time where you do need to learn how to kill a game and crosses like that aren't going to do it yeah. now the thing that we always talk about in jamaica is the discipline now they're ahead they're in control of the game can they stay disciplined or do they want to put that dagger in with a third goal they don't need the third goal they're in control they knock it around it's going to come if they play the way they're playing on the other hand the u.s they haven't been able to control the midfield at all we haven't talked about maurice Adu. we haven't talked about williams we haven't talked about dempsey or even so much as jones or altador they don't have anybody that can control the ball to settle the game to get them back into any kind of rhythm. Gomez pounces back into the midfield again, looking for a buildup. Johnson playing some real defense here against Maddox. That might be the reason they went to the youngster. Johnson can't push forward now. Out wide, Parkhurst fakes the cross, lays it in, chipped to the middle. Good idea, but no one at the back post finally tracked down. Dempsey with the stutter steps, pulling out a few tricks. Now back to Johnson. That's going to be an interesting race if Jamaica does get a counter. I have a feeling the only one that might be able to keep up with Johnson and Maddox is wearing a gold medal around his neck. Be in sport.tv where you can find out more information about the channel. Also follow us on Twitter. Check out the schedule. Plenty more coming on Tuesday. Ball to the inside. Altidore caught on the wrong side of the defender. Don't forget on Sunday a recap of this busy weekend. 930 Eastern and then also the Antigua and Barbuda road game for the U.S. Also on Be in Sport. Phil Shane, Marcelo Valboa, Robbie Earl. It's a 2-1 game for Jamaica. 20 minutes remain. Robbie, Jamaica in firm control right now. It's up to the U.S. to do something. And it looks like they're about to. A couple of substitutions. One of them is Breck Shea. And the other one, maybe a bit more of a surprise. Looks like that's Francisco Torres. So... Let's see. Looks bigger, but looks like a 16. And it is Boyd, 18, not 16. I was thinking Torres maybe took some Lionel Messi growth hormones, but Boyd, a handful. This will shake things up a bit. Wonder whether these subs would have come in anyway if the score was still 1-1, but Klinsman's hand is called. into the area towards the spot. Boyd back to goal, fighting for it right away. So is Shea at the top of the box, deflected away. So up steps Goodson to win it. U.S. starting to roll the dice a bit. Nice spin by Shea, but he left something behind. Cleared away for the throw. It was two subs that came on in the Mexico game, wasn't it, that contributed to the goal? And Klinsman's hoping that Breck Shea and Terrence Boyd can come on and have some kind of effect because his team need a lift. Just gone a little bit flat. One or two players looking at each other, trying to ask how they're going to get back into the game. There's Breck Shea, the 22-year-old, who needed some disciplining in Dallas and did seem to take that to heart. One of the heroes of Azteca. On the other side, Terrence Boyd, another one of the German-American youth coming through. X of the Dortmund system signed with Rapid Vienna in the offseason and it already has scored four goals in the young campaign including a brace this pass round Maddox through ball Parkhurst sliding in they have been unable to take advantage of Parkhurst on that flank in fact having more success down the near side when Johnson gets caught up field 
have to say neither of the fullbacks have really gone on as much as, as I would expect in Fulham. Maybe that's a, a compliment to the way Jamaica have had the pace on the counter attack. Yeah, I mean, I, I never expected, especially away from home, the two outside backs to really get forward. I think you're looking at more at Dempsey and Jones to get into the attack. Away from home, you know how difficult you play there. I've played there. You know how difficult it is to run the heat, the humidity, to get up and back. So I think you were looking more of Dempsey and Jones to get involved. But again, we didn't see much of Alto. That's why you see a Brett Shea come in. And, and that, to me, is, is maybe some legs. We saw what he did in Mexico. He came in, he created some problems with some good pace, dangerous on set pieces. What well, has been impressive so far from Jamaica is their organization, that the management of the, of the ball, they're taking good care of the football, not wanting to give it away. Morrison, 28-year-old. The calming influence in the midfield can also turn the heat up just a bit when needed. All the way back to Miller. I think the one thing that will be almost first out of the mouth of Whitmore if this score holds was the composure of his team when they went under fire early on. First putting out the fire and then starting one of their own. Dangerous from Cameron, but it worked. Now the footsteps behind Williams off to Shea into the middle. Nice turn, but again for Dempsey asking a lot. And you wonder whether there'll be anything left in the tank. Come Columbus. Bit surprised it was Altador that came? No, not at all. I, I didn't think he was really involved in the game much. At times, we saw him back all the way defending for the U.S. and chasing bodies down, trying to get himself. And you know how it is. When a forward's not getting the ball, what's he do? He drops, he drops to get involved in the game. He didn't get involved. Not his fault. It was hard for the, for the U.S. to find him. There hasn't been much great midfield play. And let's not do, take it away. Jamaica's done a very good job ever since they got into the game in the 22nd minute. They've done a good job of close space down not giving the US time to play I've got to say in fairness to Altidore as well this isn't a midfield that's that creative Phil you, you look at when they've had possession there isn't that play that number 10 in there who can find a special pass who can who can clip something through to to a forward and so I still think that's something that Jurgen Klinsmann's striving to find Johnson a nice ball but it pops up well, I think he has it. Unfortunately, he's got a hamstring problem, and he's in an L.A. right now, probably watching the game in Landon Donovan, or even a Bradley, the vision he has. They can play balls in the... Those are two big bodies that we haven't talked about that the U.S. is missing in the midfield. However, I would say that you're still dancing around the biggest hole, which in many ways hasn't been filled since Tab Ramos left. There is no real number 10 collision on the far side, and that... Leaves Jermaine Jones grabbing at his face, a yellow card, and Javon Watson's retaliation. But the U.S., through the Bradley era, even in many ways the, the end of the arena era, uh, that empty bucket. You basically said, we don't have one, we're not going to play with one, we're going to try and attack from the flanks. But, but I think that's been through the history. You can go back to when Ricky Davis played, from Ricky Davis to Hugo Perez, Hugo Perez to Tab Ramos, Tab Ramos to, to Claudio Reyna, Claudio okay. Reyna to Landon Donovan. Where's the next player? Ball launched in wide side. Settling is Jones, gets rid of it to Williams, asking a difficult ball. Down he goes in a heap. U.S. continues to play, and again until the referee blows the whistle. Ball sails. It was a blue and gold sandwich, but it found the gold. And now a counter for Jamaica. It's Watson pulling it back. And you can see the collision, some frustration that they didn't kick the ball away. And that's the negative of this instruction from FIFA. Jermaine Jones is saying we got a man down and Jamaica is saying they don't want us to stop. Well, Jermaine Jones isn't happy that the referee didn't blow his whistle in the first place and, and he's charged across and, he, and he's made sure he's caught the, the Jamaican midfield player there. Just has to get control of himself again, Jones. Just starting to see the red mist a little bit. Frustrated that things haven't gone his way. He's not had much possession on the ball as he would like. 
And again, getting back to our conversation with a moment while Williams gets some treatment. Reyna wasn't even really that in many ways. He was the guy behind the guy, but there wasn't anyone there. Donovan's the guy next to the guy. But he's the guy, go back to the, you can see the U.S.'s lone goal come right in here. We talked about it. a little bit of luck. The U.S. started off very well. They got the goal. They're in control, and little by little, you saw Jamaica building in with confidence. And here, the free kick. Well, the first one by Austin gets that slight deflection off Cal Beckerman. You need that little bit of luck. This had no luck attached to it. This is about pure skill and pure ability. Luton Shelton with a wonderful goal. It might well turn out to be the winner. And again, not saying easy, easy, easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Easy. <laughs> Getting a bit excited. 12 minutes, 12 minutes, 12 minutes to go. As you can see the pulse rate going up. But again, not saying the guys like Reyna or Donovan aren't great players, aren't important players. Yeah. But you're looking for that one guy who can bring out the best of everyone else. Then again, uh, pretty much every team on earth is. Yeah, but listen, when the U.S. has a Donovan out there, there'd be two Jamaican players keeping an eye on him because he's that good. When Claudio Reyna was out there, maybe he wasn't the fastest, but he was very intense intelligent and he was crafty you always had two guys marking him that leaves somebody open that's what the u.s is missing today they're not really drawing the attention they don't have that one guy well, dempsey would be but they know he's not fit they know he's not fit you said he's done a nice job of not playing in a while but this isn't the dempsey we're used to seeing well they have a little over 10 minutes to turn this one around or jamaica will be leading the group and the 2-1 will also help them when it comes to goal differential, meaning a tie in Columbus, and they'll head into the final two matches in the driver's seat. Could you say that again, Phil, please? <laughs> it all depends on what happens with Guatemala and Antigua. <laughs> uh, I guarantee you that Jurgen Klinsmann thought this might happen, but also thought he had the right pieces to the puzzle. And we talked about this early on, Marcelo. This is one of those trying games. We talked about it from a Whitmore perspective, but also for Klinsman. It's one thing to win an Azteca in a friendly or in Italy in a friendly, but you get paid to get to the World Cup and do something when you get there. Again, it was a friendly. Great result for the United States. Tim Howard came up with huge saves, but we talked about it again in the pregame. The highs and the lows. You beat them, now you got to come into Jamaica. But again, when you go into a World Cup qualifier... Nice turn, cross towards the spot, headed high in the air by the smallest man in the park, Jason Morrison. You're Good still hustle. missing the two big pieces of this team, or three, Boca Negra, you're missing Landon Donovan, and, and Michael Bradley, which is a huge piece of the pie for this national team. Definitely keeps things together when they're starting to unravel. Gomez bodied down, and I think that's one of the, the intriguing things, the development of Bradley, and it's probably only going to be sharpened in his time at Roma. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you let, can me, let me just try and ba balance yeah. this equation now. The, the huge talent pool that America can choose yeah. from. No one in, the, in that stadium now is going to be feeling sorry for America with one or two of the players no. they're missing. I believe you, you know, there, there should be enough out there to, to come and get a result from, from no. America. No, point I, of view. I don't think we're taking away what Jamaica's doing. I'm saying on the U.S.'s part, the lack of creativity that we're missing is because of two guys that are, you take out Austin today and you take out possibly Miller take out, take the goalkeeper today, it's a different team. It's a di or take out Ryan Johnson. Off the restart, 82nd minute, in comes Miller, gets a hand to it and actually slaps it wide to safety. A little nerve wracking. Over many ways, you could say that even going back to Andy Williams, there hasn't yeah. been a playmaker for Jamaica. Whitmore's having to, to go around that and, and shake things up himself. And it's working. As you wanted to hear, they'll be in the driver's seat in about 10 minutes. Ball deflects far side. Parkhurst with some backspin. Out comes Miller again. Strong punch. U.S. starting to put the pressure on. Or is it Jamaica just dropping back? Cross pass. A strong header by Dempsey, but sends it over the crossbar. And it looks like Miller's a little nicked. Well, there was a couple of good challenges, actually, on Dempsey when the ball comes across. He's slightly got a knock there, Miller. It looks like Jamaica about ready to make a switch. Miller still stretching out, but they'll give him a chance. Take another look at this free kick. Well, I like this one because he comes, he makes his mind up. He's going to attempt to catch it, gets a good fist to the ball. Now what's the yellow shirts? Just put some pressure on Dempsey. There's just enough pressure from the Jamaica team to put Dempsey off. Can't make the contact that he'd like. 
Well, talked about Luton Shelton and his contribution, but it looks like it might be done. Shelton will exit and perhaps with an eye on fresh legs for next week. And also looking to clog up the midfield a bit. The 24 year old Harborview midfielder out of Archbishop Carroll High School. So not just. That's one of the local MLS. teams that, that does really well in Jamaica, produces a huge amount of talent. Coming out of the nation's capital in D.C., which in some effects, this will erase that ghost. Jamaica going into the Gold Cup, thinking they had a good chance to get their first scalp against the United States, but it ended in a 2 nothing victory for the U.S. And here in Kingston, the U.S. had a golden opportunity with the early goal, but Jamaica's bounced back with two of their own. And Klinsman still looking for an answer. That's interesting now because nerves becomes a little bit of an issue for the Jamaican team. They can start thinking and start to, to look towards that 90 minutes. Haven't got to get nervous, have to keep doing what they're doing, keep the belief, keep the ball. And I gotta say, they've, they've done that today. Yep. They've controlled it when they took the lead. They're calm, they're knocking it around. Tactically, they've stayed disciplined and yep. where they Good should stay. They're clogging the right spaces. They're not giving the U.S. any opportunity to get any kind of freedom. So I would say so far, they've stuck to, to the coach's plan. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Columbus, just another city with another stadium. What? Jamaica's done would work pretty much anywhere in the world and the United States would still have problems so a lot to resolve over the next few days. There's an argument as well that America might have to come out a little bit more in the Columbus game which will suit Jamaica with that pace on the counter attack. If it was a draw maybe it would have seen Jamaica have a little bit more pressure but with three points in their pocket on the night some insurance that's worthy under pressure. I think in Columbus, you're going to see a different team. You have to see a different team that's going to be more aggressive, that's going to push higher. You have you're to. You're still locked into the 24 players, though. I know. I, I'm, not, I'm not even worried about that. But the mentality, the mentality has to be, we have to be more aggressive. I think you'll see a Boca Negra in the game. I think you'll see a few extra bodies in that'll start. But this is the team that has to come out and has to push higher, more pressure at home, and don't let what we've seen silly little fouls cost you the game today. There's Beckerman, one of those silly little fouls. Martin Vasquez trying to figure out what the answer might be in a few days' time. You see from an offside perspective, the U.S. getting a few breaks, earning a few more. Looks like we might see one final sub for Jamaica. Omar Cummings loosening up on the sideline. Ball hops up, gets caught between the legs. Cameron finally forced to put it out for the throw. And that's great play for Jamaica. Just a long ball played over the top with all that pace to go and put defenders under pressure. And you can see Theodore Whitmore just calming one or two of his players down, making sure they don't rush forward and leave holes in behind. Ball's in the right end of the pitch as far as Jamaica are concerned now. Never the most animated coach, Theodore, but <laughs> a deep thinker, understands the game, very passionate. Off the throw in, Lavelle Palmer. I'm sure he'll have a few things to say with his ex Dynamo mate, Jeff Cameron, in a few moments' time. But will it be rueful or celebratory? U.S. has figured three minutes of added time. Have not been a lot of injuries in the second half. So figure about seven minutes of action if they want to get an equalizer, but at the same point, not blessed with speed. And with Maddox out there, they do open themselves for a third, and that's when goal differential and goal scored could play a role. Top two teams will advance. That's a luxury, so all falls on what Guatemala and Antigua are able to do. Into the center, deflected away, slammed off Williams, reclaimed by Johnson. Sees the blue shirts back, and he'll take the smart turn. Good ball, sneaks away from Cameron. Off to the near side, Maddox spots the run. 
Good hustle again. Rudolph Austin is not slowed down from the opening whistle. Johnson through the wickets. Now Cameron, a little late to get off the ball off his foot. And Austin, you're tracking. Look, you're looking at the man of the match. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. Everything he's done today, he's led this team by example, by hustle, by causing free kicks to get the goals. That's what a guy does to help his team. Johnson, nice ball inside, laid back. Boyd unable to make the turn. Williams out wide. Parkhurst again. He's got a good delivery, but he lofts it high. Defense a chance to regroup. Gomez can't get the trigger pulled. Morrison clears and then pays the price. Maddox on the ball, and Jamaica will push this one into touch. Dempsey exchanging pleasantries. I'm not sure how pleasant they were, but... Certainly the Jamaican players also knowing how to, to work the clock. Sometimes you have to go down, break the rhythm of the game, give your team a chance to, to get a breather, to organize themselves, get set up again. See one or two players just shaking hands, giving themselves encouragement. They know there's a big five minutes maybe left in this game for an historic victory. 18 without a victory against the United States. We were wondering which jinx might end. 37 seconds in, we thought it might be the other one. We give full credit, Theodore Whitmore showing what he learned in D.C. Jurgen Klinsmann, well, can he use this as a lesson in Columbus? Is anybody else surprised that Dempsey's still in the game after not playing for so long? Again, that's why I thought they might keep Altidore, but it went to the starting 11. It looked brilliant in the first yeah, minute. Yeah. It's almost as though Klinsman has said, well, we're not going to play him then anyway, and the odds aren't with us here. Chance on the break. Hosworthy, the big man, showing some skill, but it bounces awry. Jones. What Jamaica have done this last 15 minutes or so is make what do you call good decisions. They've played the ball forward when they needed to. They played down the side of the pitch when they had to. They've slowed the game down. As opposed to a blind pass across the midfield from Shea. Up forward for Johnson. You mentioned Austin deservedly the MVP. I think Johnson will get some plaudits from his coach doing the dirty work up front. And I think he's occupied both the center halves, Goodson and Cameron tonight. That takes some doing. 90th minute, and now a chance if they wish to get Omar Cummings. Ryan Johnson will be the player that leaves. And Omar Cummings, nice to see him back healthy, at least from a Colorado Rapids perspective, the 30 year old out of Old Harbor in Cincinnati. He deserves his applause, Johnson. Putting a real shift of work up there. And now even more speed. And it, again, you think about Columbus. Anyone that thinks, okay, well, we'll just get the three points there, obviously wasn't paying attention for the 90 minutes. This was a fully deserved win. Ball chipped into the area. Glancing header, still no signal as to how much time will be added. Cleared all the way back. Whitmore's future as a ball boy in question, but as a coach. Launched forward. Boyd again challenging. Watson gets tangled. It's caught between the heels of Cummings. Maddox on the near side, bumped off by Shea, still in play. No, it'll be U.S. ball. This one's still not over, but they need better than that. Lofted ball over on the far side. Joel Sr. flailing at it, whipped across to the penalty spot. Acrobatic, but no touch, and then blasted into orbit. Fabian Johnson perhaps signifying everything that went wrong in this match for the U.S. Opportunity, but unrewarded. Yeah, it's all become a bit desperate for the U.S., just long balls pumped forward, and as long as Jamaica keep their discipline, keep their numbers at the back, doesn't look like they've, they haven't had that much 
much trouble keeping the, the US team out in the second half. Blasted away with Shelton out. Jermaine Taylor wearing the captain's armband at the moment. Headed back by Goodson. Shea, a little shake and bake. Still fighting for possession and then tumbles on the near side. Rodriguez says fair play. Now a long ball that misses the target. Taking it to the corner, perhaps 93rd minute. Into the center on the run, deflected away. U.S. gets a chance to get it back. But they can't keep possession and Jamaica a chance to kill more time. Yep, this ball should go right in the corner. It's somewhere around the corner flag and Americans want to foul or want to kick it out. That's where the game should be played. You see the crowd in the background out there sensing the victory. There's going to be some party in Kingston tonight. Well, knocked free, then launched into orbit. Maybe one last gasp for the U.S. if Rodriguez will let them. The throw in deep in their own end. See if fans just run off with the ball, not giving it back to the American players. And that will do it. The final whistle from Rodriguez, and the U.S. can't even get the ball in play. Congratulations to Theodore Whitmore, able to do something no coach before him has done, and guide Jamaica to victory over the U.S., and Robbie fully deserved. I have to say, apart from the first minute, the team have done it. The coach proud, themselves proud, and the country proud. It, it was a magnificent performance in the end, and they've dominated a team that sits some nearly 30 points above them in the FIFA rankings. And Marcelo, taking a look at these goals here today from a U.S. perspective, it almost seemed a little complacency settled in after this early charge. You know, they <clears throat> started off quick at here 37 seconds in. That's the start the U.S. wanted. They got on the scoreboard. They got their leading score there right on the tack. You got everybody involved. You had pressure. You put your makeup on their heels. A little bit of luck. The ball bounces. There you go with Clem Dempsey. 37 seconds in, they're in. And then after that, Jamaica, we talked about a little bit, a bit of luck with Austin coming in there to flex off right here. Watch Kyle Beckman jump, split his legs, just enough of a deflection to redirect it where Tim Coward couldn't get it. And then I tell you what, Shelton, I haven't seen a free kick like this in a long time. He winds up, he buries it with a pace, he gets a dip on it off the post to put Jamaica up two to one and the game winning goal. Well, Robbie, the celebrations continuing. And I guess the one thing that's bad for Jamaica is they have to come back and do it in a few days' time, but the team has to be enjoying this one. Yeah, I'm not sure that what's bad about that. When, you, when you're a group like we've talked about, that Theodore Whitmore's been blending, been, been putting together, you look forward to going out and playing games and, and playing together. And I get the sense that they're looking forward to Tuesday night in Columbus now. It's going to be a difficult night for the American team. Take a look at the statistics. The foul's relatively even. Jamaica catching up as the game progresses corners in favor of Jamaica shots evenly balanced but uh, this is one of those situations where shots or the statistics don't tell the tale a match that the United States had a chance in the early going but in many ways more questions than answers today now, I think you can't take anything away from Jamaica tonight Jamaica deserved they came out they controlled the second half they put the pressure tactically they came out and stuck to what the coach wanted to do you got to give all the credits to Jamaica today well Robbie Earl and Marcelo Balboa, great job on the game, and we'll be back to wrap things up as we watch how it happened again. The Express Desk with all the details and all of the recaps. It's 2-1 Jamaica. Victory at the office.